टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम है नहीं मेरा नहीं मेरा साइड नहीं है हेलो क्या प्रॉब्लम चालू ऑप्शन गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई हिमानी मनराल द इमीजिएट पास प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ रोजरा क्लब ऑफ जी एल एस आई डी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस सेशन अबाउट डिजाइन एंड सर्विस This webinar will introduce you to how design and service go hand in hand and the role that Rotary Club of GLSID plays in it. The speaker today are from our parent club, the Rotary Club of Cosmopolitan Ahmedabad. They will speak about their experiences with working with our club on various different projects, how it relates to design and service, and their thoughts on the road ahead. I would like to uh, continue the introduction by speaking few words about GLS Institute of Design. GLS Institute of Design is a prominent institute under GLS University Ahmedabad offering design courses pertaining to various creative fields our institute offers four years bachelor of design program and five years integrated master of design program with specializations in the area of fashion design communication environment and product GLS ID has strong established in industry network and a global design institute partnership which makes the course a global standard program taking a culture route to design gls envisions to adopt experiment explore assimilate and innovate to create a unique environment of design learning we strongly believe in the philosophy of learning by doing now i will request madhukar sir to take up the platform to tell us a little about what rotary is 
Thank you, Hemani. Uh, first of all, let me thank you for inviting me. And it's really a pleasure for me to be here along with the youngsters. Yeah. Let me give you a brief of what Rotary is. Rotary is an international service organization whose stated purpose is to bring together business and professional leaders in order to provide humanitarian services and to advance goodwill and peace around the world. It is a non-political, non-religious organization open to all. Rotary is a global network of neighbors, friends, leaders, and problem solvers who see the world where people can unite and take actions to create a lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and within ourselves. Together, we apply our professional experience and personal commitment to tackle our community's most persistent problems, finding new and effective ways to enhance health, stability, and prosperity. Rotary International today is 1.2 million Rotarians in 200 countries, comprising about 35,000 clubs. Rotary International comprises of individual Rotary clubs. The Rotary Foundation was established in 1928 to raise and distribute funds in support of local and international service projects that Rotarians around the world design and carry out. Rotaract Club bring together youngsters of the age of 18 to 30 to exchange ideas with the community, develop leadership, gain professional skills, and simultaneously have fun doing the service projects. In communities worldwide, Rotary and Rotaract members work side by side to achieve their goals. Rotary develops these uh, community service projects in six broad areas, promoting peace, fighting disease, providing clean water, saving mothers and children through accessible healthcare, supporting basic education and literacy, and of course, protecting the environment. The Rotary Club of Calcutta became the first Rotary Club chartered in India on 1st January 1920. Today, 100 years in India, we have about 3,000 clubs throughout the country. Our Rotary Club Cosmopolitan Ahmedabad is about five years old with about 40 members, but we have many dedicated Rotarians who have served more than two decades. Our club promoted the Rotary Club of GLSID last year, and I'm pleased to say with the energetic performance of the club, we have participated in a project along with the Ahmedabad Commissioner of Police, Blind People Association, for which we got a lot of exposure and recognition in the local public, from the local public. That, my friends, is a short introduction of Rotary. We'll, you will get a lot of information from the web. Thank you, everybody. So as, as Madhuka sir said, our role as humans is to contribute to our society, giving back to the community that that is what Rotary is all about. So without any further ado, let me start this session. But before that, I would request everyone to submit the questions they have down below. They will be asked and answered by the respective speaker at the end of this session. So let me introduce you to the first speaker for the evening, Dr. Shomitra Banerjee. He, with his 30 plus years of successful international business, out of his 20 years in the cooperative world, with Rubamim Pharmaceuticals, Zydus Kedila, and many more. His extensive job profile and area of expertise acts as a great asset to the club and the projects carried out. He is the current president of our parent club, the Rotary Club of Cosmopolitan Ahmedabad. Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, pleasure to be invited on this uh, evening session. So, uh, it's a great occasion because uh, we partnered with GLS about a year back and we successfully executed a few projects in the course of the year and last three months, of course, uh, uh, we are in a COVID situation which kind of restricts our activities. So, this is a nice platform to start discussion on what we did and what we are going for future. 
So let me take a cue from the COVID situation and dive into the discussion right away for uh, the kind of qualities that a club, which is the road track, or people within the club need to have to execute community projects. To take the cue from COVID, let's look at what could be, what was the most essential services or what was the most critical to COVID during the lockdown period. You had milk and you had medicines. So milk and medicines were identified as two of the most critical uh, uh, things required during the lockdown, when it was a proper lockdown. Right now we are in an unlocked situation. In every project, you need to identify what is the milk and what is the medicine for that particular project, which means what is critical to the success of the project. And in my personal opinion, with years of experience, I can tell you if you are able to really narrow down well into defining what is the milk and what is the medicine for the project, which means in, uh, in management languages, what is the criticality of a particular element to the entire project, if you can well identify it before starting the project, I think 50% of the project can be successfully done. Most people go wrong in correctly identifying what are the critical points of the project. So here we bring our experience of the club with more than 30, 35 years experience of most of the active members of the club who are involved in the project and guide the GLS road track into uh, defining what could be the uh, critical path to the project. Uh, there are many engineering terms and I'm sure uh, students of design, you are doing projects and you are familiar with critical path methods, CPM and PERT, which is program evaluation and review technique and Gantt charts and everything. Luckily, Microsoft is uh, giving very nice uh, Excel uh, modifications which can help tracking projects. But coming back to the whole thing, define early on what is most critical to the success of the project. The other very important thing that you need to understand is that in community projects, you are dealing with a wide uh, 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 audience. You deal with institutions, you are probably dealing with government departments, you are dealing with local leadership in the community. For example, if you're doing a village project, you need to deal with the Sarpanch, you need to do with the, deal with the village elders, you need to deal with the village community as such, understand how they work, etc. Now, please understand, uh, GLS team, that these, these are not the people you are exposed to in daily life. When you are doing a community project, it's very different from what you are doing a project inside GLS. Inside GLS, you know the landscape. You know the reaction of people, you know the level of people, you know the environment, you know the, the, the maturity of the people, you know the communication style, you know the social media skills of the people. But when you're dealing with a community project, you're dealing with the external world. This is something which you need to understand very well, that the landscape is completely, completely changed when you're doing a community project. Because you are in directly direct interface with the community in such for which you have absolutely no knowledge, absolutely no knowledge. And I would like to bring you a new definition of teamwork. Teamwork, as they say, is people working together. I would put in that the new definition of teamwork, particularly in community projects, is the ability to work with people, to deal with people who are very different from you. Very different in the sense they are coming from different academic background, educational background, social skills, their uh, knowledge about the world, the knowledge about how they do things, etc. And please understand that you are entering into their community. They are not entering into their community, into your community. So you need to have much more understanding of their way of functioning in order to do a successful and an integrated project with them. Here, the leadership role is very, very important in doing any community project. And uh, my memories go back to uh, the boat race of Kerala. I'm trying to give you examples to drive home the point. And uh, I'm sure all of some of you have witnessed in physical or maybe witnessed on the television the Kerala boat race, which happens during Onam, which is like uh, next month, I think August or September sometime. So the job of the leader is to direct the energies of all the hundred uh, 
people who are rowing the boat in one particular direction, which means the row must hit the water at a particular time and it must be pulled at a particular time, etc. And the movement has to be coordinated to give the maximum speed. So, because speed is important as far as winning the race is concerned. So, the role of the leadership or leader in this particular community project is very, very critical because he needs to direct the energies of everybody in one particular direction and that is for the success of the project. So, the role of the leader is very, very critical in terms of a successful community project. This is something I would say is most important in terms of uh, delivering the right uh, level of project and implementing it successfully. One of the other things and the last thing which I would like to talk about is the visibility and the public image. Please note that as uh, GLS students, whenever you are doing community projects, you need to manage yourself that your persona, your facade, your outer appearance, the way you work, the way you talk, the way you, way you deal with people, is actually the face of GLS and the face of Rotary. This is something very critical critical to understand as in most situations we, we work the way we work, we talk the way we talk and the other people is viewing you as a Rotary representative, as a Rotrack representative. So, and they are judging you. They are judging, when they are judging you as a person, they are judging Rotrack, they are judging Rotary. So the impression that you are creating, the professionalism that you are showing, the ethics that you are uh, 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 showing to them in your particular work, your conduct is very, very important because you are the face. Please understand, you are the face to this community, whether it's a government institution, whether it's a village community, whether it's an education institution, etc., etc. These are few of the qualities which are very critical in completing a Rotary, uh, a Rotary Rotract uh, community project successfully. We did uh, one of the interesting projects we completed in February just before the lockdown, as Madhukar mentioned, was the uh, uh, association, uh, the blind school uh, car rally in asso association with Roundtable and the police department, the traffic department of the police. And uh, our theme was to sensitize the, uh, the people, uh, the general public, that the blind people have their needs. The blind people have their own ways of working. And in our everyday life, we need to be sensitive to their needs in, uh, uh, and take them as a part of our society. This was our uh, rotary message. And we did number of programs on BRTS. We did number of programs on level crossing, number of programs to sensitize through uh, public, creating public images through posters and to uh, uh, creating slogans, doing skits, painting on the walls and doing a number of programs in order to sensitize the general uh, public towards blind people. And of course, participation in the blind rally with our road tracks. So that would be a few of uh, my contribution and words in order to guide the road track in, towards some uh, community projects and I'll field the questions towards the end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Shamitra sir. So our next speaker for the evening is Mr. Madhukar Parikh, who is the founder and a chairman of Pima Controls, which is a leading company in the field of industrial automation. He has also been an active member of community service organizations like Roundtable and Rotary Club for many decades. During these years, he has held many important positions and superheaded various community service projects. He is very passionate about the education of underprivileged children. Uh, thank you, Hemani. Uh, hi, everybody, once again. I come here to share my thoughts and experience on how working for community benefits each of us. Serving the community can be done while concentrating on your studies and your career thereafter. So we say engaging in community services provides students with an opportunity to become active members of the community and have a lasting position, positive impact on the society at large. Community services or Volunteerism enables students 
to acquire life skills and knowledge while they provide service to those who need it the most. Now, as uh, Dr. Banerjee just mentioned about the old requirement, how it should be handled and what should be done over there, you will see that there are a lot of facets of your personality which will be interpreted by the outside world. So you have to improve your skills and you will automatically learn while doing these things. And I will share with you some of the skills that you would learn while doing the community services. One of the most important things which start off with is punctuality. We take punctuality in India very casually and quite often we just walk in late and other people pardon you for that because we are all used to it. But in when you do community services, you have to be on time because others are waiting for you. And if once or twice they ignore you, but afterwards they will just forget you and continue with the project and ultimately you will be the loser. So you have to learn to be punctual. Next is the time management. Time management, you have to decide between yourself, the time you devote to your studies, the time that you will devote for the projects, for your family, and how you will manage between it to achieve the targets which you have decided for yourself. So you have to learn how to manage your time to achieve your results or whatever you have decided to do. Leadership, I think Shamitra has mentioned a lot of things. You have to turn, you are all basically, basically leaders in your own right, but you have to polish up your capabilities. You have to learn to motivate and inspire other people, create a vision, learn to listen to other people, and then take decisions. Decision making is a very important thing. Even if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter, but you have to learn the art of decision making. To this comes your ability of communication. Your communication skill is something which is required right throughout when you deal in such projects. You have to go and speak to the outside world. As Shamitra again mentioned, you meet different, different type of people. So you must know how to communicate with them, whether they're the lower strata or the upper strata. You have to learn to communicate with them. And when you're going to donors, when you're going to there, you will have to make presentations in a manner by which you will be able to influence the donor to give you money. So there are a lot of communication skill, including public speaking, which you will have to cultivate. And automatically, once you involve in all these things, you will build up your community communication skills. Teamwork, I think Shamitra uh, spread very rightly, the ability to work with seniors, equals, juniors, the other thing is worth ethics. Work ethics is a very important aspect. You have to be on time. You have to be honest with yourself. You learn to do those things. You may be able to spend 500 or 1,000 rupees just like that. But when you work with public funds, you have to learn that if I save even 1,000 bucks for the project, I will be able to use it for something else. Your work ethics, honestly, looking at things, being honest to other members of, the society, of your committee, all these things will build up your work ethics. But when you do all these things, this is all built confidence within yourself. Confidence to speak, confidence to give ideas, confidence to negotiate. So all these things build up your confidence, which by community services will help you a lot. Now, invariably, when you do such projects, you're going to find, come across problems, something which you come, which is unexpected. And when you come across these things, you as a collective team have to start solving those problems because you cannot avoid completing the project in time. So all your capabilities, thinking out of the box, using your creativity, all these things put together will allow you to learn how to solve problems and ultimately achieve whatever you're trying to achieve in time and within the cost structure. So this is what is very critical. Now, the other thing is when you work in a teamwork, when you work with other partners, when you work with the seniors, when you work with the juniors, there are certain instructions decided and there are certain decisions done. So you have to learn to follow instructions in total. What happens usually is that we tend to do is we just take it for granted. Someone tells you something, listen to it half and then do it half. That's not the way. You have to follow the instruction in total so that the entire project is not jeopardized. You have to learn to see that if you follow the instructions, you will be in a position to execute the project properly. 
Having said all this thing, I think one of the most critical aspects of this project is planning. We all talk about planning, we need to do planning. But when you do commu community services, planning, the more detailed planning that you do will help you in arriving at much at arriving at results much faster and more accurately. I'll just give an example what we experience sometimes, like supposing you got to go put up a billboard somewhere or a poster somewhere. And you if you want to be correct 100% in the time frame that you want to go and do it, you'll have to go visit it, plan where you want to put it, what, check what is the visibility, how will you tie it up over there or how will you fix it over there. All these aspects, the more detailing you do, the better will be your project. And having said that, I think professionalism, as mentioned by Shomitra again, he mentioned the, how you have to behave yourself, how you present yourself, how you do it. Professionalism is a very important thing. You have to learn. And obviously, when you do all these things, what is desired on the project, you will be able to achieve this professionalism. And not only will this help you in the projects here, but it will help you in the normal day-to-day -day lives. And another very important aspect of learning through this is the importance of achieving your goals. Normally, we take it that, yes, I must achieve my goal. But if I miss it by, say, 20%, 30%, 10%, 5%, 5%, we accept it, okay, okay, we have still achieved the goal. But in community services, it's very important to try to ensure that you are 100% achieving the goals in what you have committed, what you have decided to do over there. Because these are going to affect the under underprivileged people who are waiting and expecting the results of whatever you have decided to do in a community service. So if you are not able to do it the way you want to do it or delay it, they will be very unhappy and you yourself will feel bad against it. Oh, I promised this thing and I couldn't do it over there. So you have to do all the other activities to ensure that you achieve your goals. Well, these are some of the main skills that you will develop that will help you right through your life to reach greater heights in your career as well as being a good human being. As you commence your journey working for the community, you would have confidence if you have a partner to join you to execute your ideas. You can execute better and bigger projects collectively with many friends together as a group. However, if you, as a group, work along with a ready-made platform for your community services, you will learn all the skills faster, better with the backing of an organization that has the resources, infrastructure, operational tools, and huge experience. Rotary International and its youth wings, Rotary, Rotrack, offer you the platform for not only personal development, but to carry out your community services of your choice independently. You could get the added advantage of training along with the wealth of information carried out all world over. You can also get funds for projects which impact the lives of the underprivileged and the community at large. Rotary and Rotary clubs are highly respected and these are the passports for you to go to many places and make uh, it, it becomes easy for your project work. Your Rotary Club has displayed very promising capabilities. I am sure they have a story to tell on the learnings and pleasure they got from the short journey in doing something for the community. With that, I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madhukar, sir. So, moving on to our next speaker for the evening. Please welcome Mr. Saket Saraf, who has over two decades of experience, work spans across the field of architecture, urban and regional planning, energy and sustainability. He heads PS Collective, which is envisaged as a platform for advocacy, research, policy analysis and professional consultancy. He is the immediate past president of Rotary Club of Cosmopolitan Ahmedabad. He is involved in superheading various community projects and uses his experience to enable various ideas. Thank you, Himani. Uh, and great 
uh, talk by Madhukar, Samitra, and rest of you. So it's a pleasure being here. Thanks to the Rotaract team for inviting me. And I look forward to many such engagements in future with, with all of you. Uh, as many of you already know, Rotaract at GLS Institute of Design is doing some phenomenal work on ground in a very short span of time. And we all at the Rotary Club of Cosmopolitan Ahmedabad are really looking forward to working with your group for all the contribution that you can potentially make to the lives of people around us. Today, I will kind of try to focus on the design aspect of the community engagement. I'm sure many of you would be eager to know, hear about that, uh, coming from a primarily a design background. And how is that different when you design in a, in a conventional setting where you have a client or a patron for whom you design, right? So I would kind of briefly touch upon that difference. Uh, and then we can take some more questions during the Q&A session. Um, so design for social impact or design for social change, design for community engagement, community development. Some people call it design for social upliftment, uh, design for innovation. There are many terms floating around, you know, but the names don't matter. What really matter at the end of the day is how many lives you are touching and how many lives you're enhancing with the mindset and the skill set of a designer. Yeah. This is what is the crux of the matter. We all know that uh, design is a way of thinking and it's an approach to problem solving. Okay. And when designers work on a problem, they look at the problem from a multi-dimensional perspective as opposed to one view, right? where the problem is framed and reframed and it goes through an iterative process. Uh, we, we know as designers that a well-articulated problem along with lateral thinking, non-linear and an iterative process leads to, in an exploratory mode, leads to a good outcome. Okay. In a conventional design process, all of this happens, but the brief and the nature of outcome is often known a priori. You know the brief, the brief is given to you or you co-develop the brief in a very controlled environment. And the outcome is also predetermined. Okay, you're doing a brochure, you're doing a web page, you're doing a product, you're doing this, you're doing that. Right? However, when you come to community engagement and you design for social change, whatever term you want to use, the brief emerges from a humanitarian approach to understanding the context. And this is the key point of departure. The brief is not given to you a priori. Even if it is given, it has evolved from a deep engagement with the people that you're designing for. And often you'll have to put yourself in the shoes of the so-called beneficiaries to understand the problem, right? And you have to understand it in the context of equity, in the context of empowerment, and most importantly, empathy. You learn to empathize with, with the problem and the people who are facing that problem. The problem, it, again, as I said, is not a uh, priorly defined, but it emerges from a series of consultations with the beneficiaries. And I think as Madhukar or Somitra said, that you know, you often have not interacted deeply enough with most of the people that you're designing with when it comes to social change. So what you really learn as designers is this ability to empathize, ability to put yourself in the shoes of others, and ability to see the world from a very different perspective. Right? And this has big ramifications on how you design, what you design, and also about knowing yourself. So it's not only about doing good to the other, but in the process, you rediscover who you are. Now, when you do this, the benefits are, of course, like anything else, the direct benefits and the indirect benefits. In, in a conventional design, you know, the benefits are direct. They are, you see them immediately, you enjoy them immediately, and the rewards are immediate. When you design for social change, the, the short term, the visible, the tangible benefits are a small proportion of the larger benefit. The larger benefit is largely intangible. They, they occur over a longer term. Uh, things like bringing in a sense of pride for the people you're designing in, uh, bringing sense of belongingness, a sense of purpose. You know, these are the longer benefits which have huge multiplier effects, which which are not, which does not really happen in a short term. And the benefits 
occur like a multiplier over year after year right and that that achievement you can only experience when you are doing a design for a community not so much when you design for 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 a conventional uh, client for that matter right so what does it take to do design for community and what as students are the three things in my opinion that you really learn in the process i think they are engagement empathy and experience and these three things are often not formally taught in a conventional academic setting you learn to engage but in a very controlled environment you learn to empathize but you have never actually interacted with people who are different from who you are and of course the experience that you get by direct engagement is is unparalleled right so i would say these are the three key takeaways when you design for social change the process becomes as important and sometimes even much more important than the product itself so the design is no more limited to a product and outcome that you put in your portfolio or showcase around now the design is the process itself that you experience that you and you know, feel good about right you you develop the ability as designers to weave through individual aspirations to negotiate conflicting issues and the goals when you talk to 100 people each of them would have a very different perspective of what what will benefit them probably and you engage at a much deeper level because what you are doing is out of empathy out of passion out of compassion right and in the process you learn to work as a team with your fellow designers and the larger stakeholders again these are things that a studio environment and academic environment may not or mostly will not be able to kind of give you and therefore when students engage in such community design processes these are the additional real life skills that really makes you even successful as a professional a okay. uh, second thing is empathy you know the when you design for social change you understand the experiences of people facing some very intense challenges in their day to day life some of those challenges it's it's very difficult to even fathom given the kind of background that most students have today right and then using that understanding you develop the design process so the design process doesn't come from a aha moment sitting under a tree sipping a cup of tea or staring at the sky you know the the aha comes from being able to establish that relationship with the with the people you're designing for and again that is a unique experience and as the world becomes more and more collaborative you know the design the idea for designer sitting under a tree with a cup of tea or whatever is changing fast and and again this empathy and this engagement is something that that you take from this and it helps you as much as it helps the the beneficiaries you are working for right uh i'll quickly wrap up i'll say that you know as a designer as a social designer you also learn that there is no quick fix that you cannot go into the field fix a problem come out and say okay it's done it's not like you design a product you deliver the product and the and the the problem is solved you know? it's a it's a problem it's an exercise of continuous engagement continuous innovation and some i like the term social innovation right rather than a so a designed product it's more about the social innovation of the process that you are, that you learn and of course the rewards both personal and societal are huge they are unparalleled you become not only a a catalyst of social change but you your work brings huge ripple effect not only solving the problem of the people you're designing for but you end up inspiring people and transforming lives and i think that last two things is 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 the reward is is the the, the ultimate that as a designer students of design you can get out of this community engagement so it's it's and it's very difficult again i'm just repeating myself very difficult to get this kind of experience within the comfort of your controlled studio experience and i'm very happy that gls institute of design is giving you this unique opportunity to start early to see this big picture early on in your educational uh, journey and where you actually learn to learn and be the change right i'll, I'll stop there and thank you iman thank you so much sir so i uh, last speaker for the evening is anisha modi 
an interior designer whose firm was established in 1999. They specialize in diverse projects ranging from residence to corporate houses and believe in responsible and sustainable designs while bringing out the uniqueness in each work. She is the youth coordinator of our parent club, Rotary Club of Cosmopolitan Ahmedabad. everybody. Thank you, uh, Himani and Mo for inviting me here, whole team, Roderick team. Looking forward to having more sessions like this with you guys. A lot is spoken already by my friends. I'll just focus a little more on design and the process. So I would like to go a little further on the topic about circuit started. How to design a for a impact. How to make design more meaningful and worthy and satisfying? Because after all, you are going to be designing for a social cause. What do we mean by a community? Either people living in a place or a group of people who have something common. Don't limit yourself with only one underprivileged people or certain strata of people as community. There can be community of business people, craft people, senior citizens, physically or mentally challenged. Even technically, the spectrum is wide and as designers, you are dreaming of the wonders. Can we bring remarkable change in anyone's life by design intervention? I think design is powerful. It's like a magic wand which gives you immense possibilities. To create impact on any community, you need to, firstly, I would suggest, first, identify the community which shakes your design senses. Find out about their issues by observing their routine. You can surely come out with many design services from various design faculties. Identify their skills. For certain community, your design can be based on their skills. Help them earn livelihood or help them earn even more. This way you can expand their market by giving them design for an upmarket. Providing for a certain cause for a certain community, as for example, like Madhukar and all, uh, say, uh, getting toilet, waters and library, basic needs for them. By the help of your designs. I remember a few months back, I met a remarkable lady from Australia on our time to Zainabad. 70 years old, textile designer. So she designs from the inspiration she gets when she visits India. And then she transfers that into her designs. And she gets, she sells those designs in Australia and gets the money back here for a, for a project. She has been Zainabad for one particular community upliftment. This is also one way of using your design. Having a community step is usage of resources. I would suggest do not limit yourself due to availability of certain resources. Optimize whatever you have, physical material, methods of design, digital platform, whatever you have. Optimize that. Limit less possibilities and limited resources. Once you are so the art of creating from limited resources, you can help almost any community at any time. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Anisha, ma'am. Now, let's move on to the question and answer session. So the first question that we are having is from Manya Shah. How, how is being a part of Rotary Club going to help us? So this is a question for Madhukar sir. Could you please answer it? Well, as I explained in my talk, the benefits that we get in building our own character, our personality, once you start doing things, you will start realizing that you're building up your personality 
and it will give you a lot of advantage and lot of things that you will learn here will be useful to you all through your life and therefore it is if you take part in these in the college days school days or in the further when you have started your career whenever you start off it it is always going to benefit you and not only benefit you it's going to benefit whoever you are working for so you get double advantage to the whole thing right i think i have answered the question yes sir so we will move on to the second question it is from tanmay jain he asked how will road track benefit us as a students questions for uh, shomitra banerjee sir okay let me let me address uh, how uh, what can we bring to the table for young road tracks okay so you know you are you are in your institute and you are doing your academics and your projects etc which are largely confined to your academic uh, sessions uh we could bring you the experience of growing up to be young leaders uh, or emerging young leaders when you take on a particular project and get active in that project and we are not going to do one project we are going to do several projects so we we will give a there would be opportunities for many students to come up and uh, uh, expand uh, the network and work so uh, you will come up as you will get groomed into young leaders right from a very early age and while doing so the leadership skills will get amplified planning execution and project implementation will automatically uh, uh, get executed and you are going to do this through real life projects not in your classroom because uh, like saket mentioned doing something in the classroom and doing something in uh, real life is very very different there is a great impact of service and fellowship uh, which uh, rotary club brings in and uh, i must mention that uh, as far as service is concerned any community in the country internationally uh, or even in india if you go and mention the name of rotary you are welcomed with open hands and rotary is an organization which is trusted which brings results which is fair and which is financially secure and independent as far as the dealings and the work is concerned so these are the value principles which we bring on the table and due to which we get recognition from communities all over the world the other very important thing is fellowship now for most of you may not know that one of the three pillars of rotary is fellowship which means that it is well understood when rotary was uh, established uh, probably 100 years back little more that fellowship is very important because you need to intermingle and exchange ideas and meet up off site and not always on on site so there are sessions there are dinners with spouses with children with engagements getting uh, speakers from different walks of life who are experts in their own field and we listen to them over dinner etc a uh, couple of road tracks like himani and few of our uh, other people have attended our fellowship fellowship sessions and i i am i can i can tell you they have been great experiences bringing a lot of financial management skills are also very important uh, which uh, you will learn being with uh, working with senior people like us who in their business or professional careers have you know done many projects in their life whether it is building a factory or building a business or building a consulting firm or uh, uh, doing projects like what saket and anisha are doing uh madhukar has a experience of building up a company from scratch into a very large company a highly technical company and uh, uh, so these are the skills that you will learn in terms of financial and uh, personal and management there are a lot of international exchange programs of road tracks that you should engage into and uh, we plan to bring in an expert from our uh, district to speak to uh, gls team to explain how the international exchange program works we have uh, rotary has good experience in uh, many parts of the world uh, doing an exchange uh, student program of road tracks and there is lot of learning which comes apart from net- networking skills which you will, which you will learn during your interaction on various community subjects there is also fellowship friendship 
and most importantly, a satisfaction of doing a community service in a very, very organized and an excellent environment. So I think these are some of the very key issues that we can bring on the table to the young road tracks in terms of uh, their association with Rotary Club and in executing the community projects that we have. I hope I have answered your question, Tanmay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, our next question is from Diti Manvi. It is from Saket, sir. She's asking how we can how we can benefit as a predominantly designers club. Okay, so do you want to say how can you benefit as designers or how the entire club can benefit by engaging in community service? So she is asking. Okay, I'll answer both. I'll answer both. Okay. So, so let, let's first say how the individual members of the Rotary Act would benefit in their capacity as young designers. Okay. Um, some of the points that I covered, which included empathy, engagement, experience, these are some of the values and the skills that are difficult to teach within a, a formal studio. So being a part of Rotaract allows you to step out of that, that confined studio experience to, to actually engage and empathize and experience some of the real life things. Of course, this may be very intangible. So coming to more tangible benefits, you know, but believe me, these intangibles are really critical and you'll appreciate it in a very long run. But coming to short term tangible benefits, uh, some of the things that Samitra already mentioned, you know, uh, and Madhukar mentioned punctuality, management, financial management, time management, process management, all of those are there. You know, that is absolutely, absolutely important. In addition, as designers, you would get real time feedback of your thinking, you know, from the people that you're designing for. It's not what you do as a student in a studio, you design, you submit, you get a, a feedback and, and there's always a hypothetical client or even if there's a real client, you, you get a feedback once you've delivered the product. Right? But here the feedback is real time. You are on the street, you are in a government school, you are directly dealing with, with, with the beneficiaries and every word of your, every action of your and every line that you draw and every idea you can see, you get an immediate feedback which allows you to be much more iterative in, and, and therefore you learn to be more iterative and you learn to be much more contextual. Uh, I think the road track also is a gateway to the larger world and as designers the road track provides you this exposure to not only the larger social world but also to a larger professional world. So through Rotaract and our connections in industry, we would be able to bring in more people to your to your programs for uh, as professional speakers, internship opportunities globally, uh, possibly jobs, or maybe you know, getting critiques on your work, something like that, right? Uh, so think of Rotaract also as a, as a gateway. And what Rotaract becomes is not what we will dictate, what Rotaract becomes, what you as a club would decide what it should become and how much of the emphasis would be on professional development and service development and things like that, right? So you are running the show, your group is running the show and you will set the priorities. We as a Rotary Club are there to kind of help you and work with you. But but what you want to become will come from, from your team. And lastly, more tangible, doing by doing all of this, you have access to a plethora of real life problems to be solved as designers. You would never be short of finding a real life context, a real life problem, a real life a client, you know, who, who would be wanting a design solution, right? And so you have a direct access to, to projects, either professional or academic. You have to do a thesis, a research, you know, you you go to BPA like the project we all did together, right? And you have a million project waiting for you to be done there. You you did this uh, craft thing at the Bhopal school, you have another million product project waiting for you to be done there, right? So this access to real life problems is, is I think, a, 
a big thing that the Rotary Club can provide. Thanks. Thank you, sir. So the other question is from Aditi Agarwal. She is asking, how was the experience working with design students? That is for Saket, sir. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I work with mostly first year and second year students, and I was thoroughly impressed. You know, though I keep my expectations at a very high level, and I'm sometimes not very polite about it, and I make it very clear. But I think the way the students of first year and second year have responded. Uh, totally taken back. They have rose to the occasion. They have delivered. I'm not saying they did the best design in the world, but they took up the challenge. They worked the best that they could. And I don't think they left any stone unturned to, to engage, to deliver, and to make a difference. And I'm very hopeful that with continuous engagement, this will only go on to become better and better. Thank so, you so much. Sir. Up to protract GLS. Thank you, thank you, sir. So the next question is for uh, Shomitra Banerjee, sir. Lakshita is asking, what is your one big plan or the project with the club that will be a big game changer and will take things to the next level? Uh, you know, we are we are working on few things. It's uh, difficult to announce in this uh, truncated year because we really don't know when we are going to open up. And uh, we are working on few things a uh, uh, little early to announce because the plans are not yet ready. But uh, honestly, everything depends upon how active uh, we can be and most important, when can we get active. Right now, it seems that the activity is going to be low for the next three months. And uh, probably after that, in uh, maybe December or January uh, next year, we can expect high level of activity. So we have we have nice projects in the pipeline. Uh, Rotary has very, very high ambitions. Uh, we all listen to uh, the uh, top uh, executives of the Rotary on the 1st of July, two days before before today. And uh, they, ca they came out with uh, whatever are their ambitions. And if you cut down their big ambitions into smaller ambitions, I can tell you, Rotract is Rotract. We can give very nice projects, very nice projects. But honestly, difficult to spell it now because we don't know when we're going to open up. When we have visibility on when we're going to open up, we are going to activate our internal uh, Rotract teams this year, Om, Himani, and Muskan, and everybody, and uh, start planning because there would be a planning phase required when you're going to work offline, which we are going to utilize the lockdown period and the low activity period. And whenever everything opens up in a big way, we're going to get uh, 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 we're going to get active. It also depends upon when your college is going to get active, which is uh, which is not uh, clear as as we speak now. So uh, just to tell you, we have very nice projects lined up, and uh, we will engage everybody, including uh, Anil sir, the director of the institute, into all our discussion and projects, and we'll together make it a success. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. So the last question for the evening would be uh, for Madhuka sir. It is from Ridha. She's asking how will be how will being a part of Road Drag Club be helpful in our personal growth? In your personal stuff. Well, I have. Uh, already spelled out a lot of things and I think all of them go towards building up your own personal character, personal growth and definitely I'll give you a simple example of my own personal life. I, we graduated in, I graduated in 1971 and we started our career and all those things. I got introduced to community services immediately after three, four years after that. And during those days, we didn't have this public speaking. We couldn't express ourselves properly. We didn't, couldn't make presentations of various types. So there was all these learnings. And when you are working somewhere, 
you don't build up a large multinational organization unless you're lucky to go around there they will teach you there but if you are on your own if you work with some smaller organizations you don't get you get very limited opportunities to do all these activities so when you work with these people you will interact with senior people from different organizations you will meet people even your own colleagues you know, maybe just say friends from different organizations and they have learned something else their exposure something else you will learn from them also so all these things are going to develop your own personality your own character and that's going to be the learning ground because you are meeting diverse people many people very experienced so it is definitely going to expose you to a lot of things and build your own character and personality i hope that answers thank you so much madhukar sir so i guess that's all for the question and answer session i would like to add a short thing mm -hmm. at the last ki uh, even i have been a part of this since this january 2020 and soon we were headed to one of the biggest event of our club so managing people time work pushing our limits for self improvement connecting with people from different fields and more than that giving back to the community just to do something good have some great experiences so this is how rotary and rotaract is all about so i would like to take this opportunity to thank our respected rotarians for taking out their time and sharing with us their valuable insights on behalf of rotaract club of gls id we appreciate your guidance and feedback in helping us navigate how to grow our club i would also like to express my gratitude to all the members who have been working so hard creating essentials and handling the technicalities of the event and of course to everyone who took out their time to come and watch this webinar we appreciate your support three cheers for the rotrack team we wish you all the best yeah cheers cheers good luck good luck good luck to all of you together we thank you thank you thank you emani great job emani great job thank, thank you so much, much. Uh, rather